Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about the cord of an airfoil, the cord line, and the uh, cord length. Uh, so, what do we use the cord for? So here are a few of the other things that we use the cord line, cord length for. So the first one that's really important is it's used to define the angle of attack. It's a reference line of the airfoil that's used to define the angle of attack, which is the angle between the cord line and the relative wind uh, coming at the airfoil. Uh, another place we use it is in the lift equation, which I've written here for a 2D uh, wing section or airfoil. Uh, so lift is equal to one half rho v squared, which is the dynamic pressure, uh, times the lift coefficient, um, times the cord length. The lift coefficient has a small l because it's a, because I'm talking about a about an airfoil. If it were for a 3D wing section, it would be a, a big l. Uh, you'll probably see that in documents or notes. Um, and then also in the aspect ratio, if it's a rectangular wing, um, it reduces to B over C. The aspect ratio that you've probably seen is uh, B squared over S for any shape wing, which is the wingspan squared over the wing area. Um, so those are just a few of the places that you'll see the cord, uh, the cord line or the cord length uh, used. So the cord line definition um, is really an imaginary straight line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge, which I've labeled in uh, red and green. And it's a pretty simple definition. But the thing that you have to be careful about is what, uh, what are the definitions of the leading edge and the trailing edge. So uh, in this case, in this airfoil, it's just like a simple, I tried to draw a symmetrical airfoil. Um, in this airfoil, you could say that the leading edge is the, is the most forward point of the airfoil, and the trailing edge is the most aft point of the airfoil. Another way of describing this is if you put a coordinate system on here, with this being the x direction, and this being the y direction, you can say that the leading edge is the most is the smallest x uh, point, and the trailing edge is the largest x point. Um, so, and then from the leading edge to the trailing edge, we draw this straight line, which is this blue line, and that is the the cord line, where we can reference the angle of attack off of. Uh, so one thing that you might that might you might come into a problem with uh, is if you get an airfoil that's shaped like this, which is common for like turbine blades. Um, it's like a highly cambered airfoil. So if you say that the that the leading edge uh, is the most forward x point and the trailing edge is the most aft x point, what you get is you get the trailing edge back here again, which is fine. But the leading edge, if you look at what the most forward uh, x point is, it's actually it's actually like right there, and that's fine. Uh, in which case the cord line, if you define it this way, the cord line would be a straight line from the trailing edge. It's kind of hard to draw a straight line here, but up to the leading edge like that, or leading edge to trailing edge. Um, but another way that some people reference the trail or the leading edge for airfoils is the point of minimum radius um, or highest curvature, essentially. So if you kind of draw, if you imagine, if you draw like imaginary circles, like here, you'd have a a pretty big circle based off of this point here, but down here you can see that the radius is the smallest, and then you could say that this point right here is the leading edge, in which case you'd have the cord line look something like this. And I'll talk about the lift, uh, the lift curve in, in another one of my videos, but this makes a big difference because first of all you've changed if, if I say that the, that the relative wind is coming in horizontally, as best as I can draw it here, and this is my V infinity, uh, like that, then, then you have a higher angle of attack if you define your leading edge here than you do if you define your leading edge here, um, which makes for problems if you're trying to get a lift coefficient off of a lift curve. Um, so you really have to know, you really just have to know where the leading edge and trailing edge are defined from, or where the cord line is of the airfoil, and then it's no problem. Uh, this is for a cambered airfoil. For, like most of you will see airfoils that look kind of like this, or like the symmetrical airfoil. And in this case, again, it's you know even though it's cambered, you still have like the leading edge can be the the most left or the smallest x value, and the trailing edge the most right or the highest x value. And again, you'd have a straight line. It's hard for me to draw a straight line sideways like this, but you have a straight line from the leading edge to the trailing edge defining your cord line. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.